Welcome back everybody. Today's video is about what happens when the grid goes down. There's a new movie, a new documentary out. I think it's called Grid Down Power Up. And it got me thinking, what's gonna happen if the grid goes down? Well, I got a solution. Well, we're gonna test that solution. It is the Zender Super Base V. Look at this giant thing. This is a satellite battery. This is a battery inside of here. It's a solid state battery. And we'll get into what that means in a little bit. Over here is another Zender product. This is the Super Base Pro. This is not a solid state. The grid goes down. Can this power my house? I want to try something that's never been done before anywhere. Power a 220 volt, yeah, 220 heat pump and air conditioner off of this here. That's right, this is a dual voltage, 120 volts and 220 volts. Now that 220 volts is only a 16 amp max and I think my 12,000 BTU mini split air conditioner heat pump is well under that 16 amp max. This thing's been working great, kind of cold out. It's in the 30s right now. They've got two doors here. This door here is a bunch of 15 and 20 amp receptacles. There's different modes that you can set this up in the phone app and I'll show you how that works. This here is an RV plug. So this here is 120 volts, 30 amp max. This here is a 220 volt plug with a 16 amp max. I'm gonna wire this in to a homemade extension cord and see if we can power the heat pump. If you're curious, this here is a satellite battery, essentially doubles the battery capacity of this unit here. We're gonna speed through this here. This is one of those things, uh, don't do, don't do any of this. This is for entertainment purposes only. I am a trained experimental electrician. So this panel is fully hot. This here is your service entrance. This comes from the house, goes through this underground wire under the ground and attaches to my house. Now we'll shut this off, pull the breaker. So we have our two hots that would have gone to the heat pump. Now we gotta find the ground wire. I don't know if I'd call this dangerous. You have to be very careful. This bar here and this bar here are the two hots for this panel. All I've done is extend the home run. It no longer goes into the panel, it goes into this long wire that we will plug into the 220 output of the Super Base V. I'm gonna click on AC output mode. And right now it's in RV mode. This is where you get your maximum power for your 120 volts. This is your dual voltage. So we should hear a beep or see a light turn on at the heat pump, at the, the mini split. Okay, we got power. Did you hear the beep? This is an inverter heat pump. It's supposed to be kind of a slow start. It's not like a big surge like your traditional air conditioner is. It's working, it's opening. This is pretty cool. Right now we're using 270 watts. That is just scratching the surface of what this thing is capable of even in the dual voltage mode. So we're up to 300 watts. See how this is a slow increase? I'm not sure if you can read that number, if there's a glare or anything. That's kind of the, the beauty of these heat pumps. It's kind of a, a very slow controlled increase in the consumption of electricity. There we go. We got heat. This thing starts moving around. We now have a battery powered heat pump. And look at this, it's only at 66% battery and we can do this for seven hours. So I'm not sure if this is exciting to you as it is to me. This thing has an amazing solar input capacity. I believe it goes up to 3000 watts input. So you could have a two kilowatt solar array. It, it isn't very difficult to come up with. I've got one kilowatt right over there. See those furnace filters? There's one, two, three, four, five, 200 watt panels that I've yet to put together. That's one kilowatt. Zender makes some portable solar panels. I got one right here. When the grid goes down, will our natural gas go down? I'm not sure. If it doesn't go down, we still have natural gas at our house. The amount of electricity to power a furnace or a boiler is much, much less than this heat pump. So you could still have heat at your house 
when the grid goes down. So I've got this plugged into the solar panel they sent out. It's supposed to be a 400 watt solar panel, but at uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, it's kind of overcast, getting 300 watts. Must have just hit a cloud. I was getting a little over 400 in full sun a few seconds ago. Very interesting that their solar panels put out more than they're rated. This here is the XT90 cable. I have it plugged into my extension MC4 cables. They go right out the door. right into my extension cables and back in the workshop. You can drive this thing. Those are powered wheels. Yeah, safety alert. You have to have all cables disconnected in order to drive it around. But I'm gonna cancel out of it because I do not wanna drive this thing off <laughs> off the workbench. Uh, but you can drive this around your basement. You could drive it around your garage. So I've rethought my decision on wiring this into my sub panel. It's probably a good business decision to give it back to them not broken. I want them to send me other things. I want them to send me this whole thing for like a long term testing. They do have a system to integrate this into your house. They have a panel that's plug and play with this unit. I'll put some shots up on the screen. You can see how this can get fully integrated into your house for on-grid, off-grid, say you've got some sensitive electronics, you plug it into this, this is plugged into the grid. Once the grid goes down, this thing instantly takes over and your sensitive electronics don't even know that the power went out. Another interesting feature with the Super Bass V is you can charge an electric vehicle with it. You can plug this in to an electric vehicle and you can also charge from an electric charging station. Comes with everything you need to, to do all that. This one here, I think this is what completes the ability to do an EV charge. This here, EV T1 adapter. If you guys are as curious as I am about what's gonna happen when the grid goes down, click the links down in the description and check out Zender. They've got this big modular system. You can take these satellite batteries off. Uh, I think you can stack up to four of them, maybe even more together to create a massive battery bank. It's dual voltage, got your 220 and your 110, and you can plug in your electric vehicle. If there's an EMP attack, we're gonna have to go back to old school gas generators. I've got a couple of those around too. Get yourself a cock gun hat and a cock gun sweatshirt. That link will be also in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.